welcome to uh, Age Management Medicine Conference. I know we know each other over the years. I'm Dr. Florence Comite, and we're going to talk about a little bit about the work we both do. This is Dr. Joe Raphael, who is CEO of PhysioAge Systems in New York City. And the topic today will be a focus on precision medicine and what that brings to age management, as well as maybe a little drilling into the immune system and how we age and what we need to look out for that may be a hidden time bomb. So let's start with what makes precision medicine approach to age management uh, particularly powerful, uniquely powerful, in your opinion? Well, I think, first of all, each of us age in different ways. Um, each with, you click off the years just like anybody else, but how fast your physiologic systems are aging both within individuals and between individuals is quite variable. So just taking a number like we often do and saying, okay, you're 50 years old, so you're eligible for this, or you're not eligible for this, you're too old for it, is not a precision approach because if you measure biomarkers of aging of the arterial system, of the pulmonary system, the nervous system, some people are functioning more like 30-year-olds when they're 50, and it wouldn't be right to treat them like a 50-year-old in your decision-making. So that's a precision approach for sure. Um, likewise, I think you get into sort of this ageist business where there are very, very healthy 80-year-olds that, you know, they probably have a life expectancy of another 10 or 15 years, and to make decisions about not delivering care to them because, you know, of their life, extent, life expectancy based on the averages for an 80-year-old, that's not a precision approach. So it's like a general one-size-fits-all as opposed to a precise end of one where it's unique about that human being. Right, yeah, and particularly with regard to age, where we often use that as to make a lot of decisions, and, right. and, and it's just people age very differently. And, and that's sort of conventional medicine. It's an average. We we're treating mm -hmm. the average. We're doing studies on averages, and it, if we look at a normal curve, it's just that little peak as opposed to using the full spectrum of the tails. And that's where precision medicine is what that's all about. We really want to know about that unique human being. As an identical twin, I know I'm not even that identical to my twin. And so that's always occurred to me and why I'm so interested in drilling into the specifics about a human being. One particular area of interest that you spoke so eloquently about is the immune system and how there's so little that we really pay attention to in some ways and some hidden time bombs. And I'd love to hear more about cytomegalic virus and what that can do and how that's related to senescent T cells and where the predictor models of perhaps protecting our immune system can make a vast difference in the quality of our life and even the length of our life. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely true. I mean, we know uh, as in general that as you get older, you're less able to fight off infections. That's why we see 65 and older individuals succumbing to a flu that a younger person would fight off fairly easily. Um, we know that vaccination responses aren't quite as good, and so when we're, you know, 50% kind of response to vaccinations. So those are sort of general ideas we know about this concept of immunosenescence, getting the, the aging of the immune system. But uh, from a more detailed standpoint, if you do some measurements in patients, you can see what, uh, what, how many senescent T cells they have. These are T cells that don't fight off infections uh, very well, but not only do they not do that, they sit there and secrete a lot of inflammation <coughs> uh, so that then they can hurt the cardiovascular system, the brain, the pulmonary system, um, and wreak a lot of havoc. So they're sort of like the old watchdog that not only doesn't do its job, but is biting the neighbors and biting the owner. It's, a, it's a really a, a bad situation. We can quantify sort of where they are in this immune senescence by looking at uh, subsets of white blood cells, the helper cells and the suppressor cells. And these suppressor cells can get old, and they not only don't do their job, but they secrete a lot of inflammatory molecules that can cause problems. Um, and when the number of those cells accumulates to a certain amount that is greater than the number of helper cells, which we all are familiar from, from looking at what happens with HIV and you lose helper cells, you get into this thing called the immune risk phenotype or profile, where instead of having a two to one ratio, you go below one, and when you're in that ratio, you may look like a perfectly healthy 60, 70, or 80 year old walking around not having very many diseases, but all of a sudden, because your immune system doesn't have the ability to fight off new infections and it's producing a lot of inflammatory molecules, you'll succumb to an infection like a flu or an ammonia or a tumor that you might fight off quickly. And it's been shown that 
there's a, up to a 50% increase in mortality rates in people that are in this inverted ratio where they have less than one for the um, helper cells to suppressor cells. And so that's one thing that I do in my practice to sort of more precisely define how well people are doing in the aging process, where I need to focus some of my energies. Uh, and one of the major actors that causes this increase in senescent T cells is cytomegalic virus, or CMV. Um, and it's thought to be a benign virus because unless you're really immunocompromised, in traditional medicine, it doesn't really cause much problem with you. But actually what it does is it slowly ages your immune system because your immune system has to work very hard to keep it at bay. Um, and that uses up your capacity to, to fight off infections and you get to a certain point where you just don't have enough cells to do that and that's when you can succumb to these infections. What can you do about that? Are there interventions to keep the CMV under control because we get antibodies once we have that virus and I'm presuming that antibodies would keep it under control but you're saying no, that in order to keep this infection at bay, you're actually using up, you're putting a burden on your immune system. Yeah, so it, CMV is in the herpes virus family, and we all know about cold sores that come out. They're called cold sores because you get them after you've had a cold, because whereas the, you have the T cells working on keeping that herpes at bay, if it has to work on a virus, then it loses surveillance of it and it comes out in a cold sore. Uh, the same thing happens with CMV. You, know, you usually don't have it floating around in your blood. It's not shedding, uh, you're not shedding virus. But if you get under a lot of stress, or if you have some other virus that's attacking you, then it can come out. And uh, the, you know, the immune system can't fight it off for that time. And each time you reactivate, your immune system has to proliferate, divide, and then the telomeres of those cells get shorter and shorter, and that's what causes the gradual uh, senescence, because these white blood cells can no longer divide to fight off infections. And then instead of dying and going away like they're supposed to when the immune system's working as it should, they hang around and cause problems and become that old watchdog that's just taking up space and not doing its job and biting its neighbor, biting its owner. Those are the senescent version, Those but they're causing damage. They're not just sleepy and right. inactive. They're actually actively hurting you. Correct. Actively hurting you uh, in, in a lot of ways. It's been associated with increased risk of osteoporosis, cardiovascular disease, cancer, uh, increase in, in this condition called frailty where you really uh, are losing weight, can't do your activities of daily living. Um, most of the things that bring people to an earlier demise as they're older are associated with increased inflammation. They even have a term for that called inflammaging, uh, which I was coined by an Italian researcher, um, Dr. Franceschi, uh, about a decade ago, uh, which is a great term because it's, it's, that's one of the major things that happens with aging. And these chronic viruses contribute to that. It's this increase in all the bad molecules and less of the more uh, the ones that can help you, like interfering. Inflamed right. aging. Right. Yeah. Inflammaging. Like inflammation with aging. And so what are the exact specific interventions oh, that you yes. start with with individuals where you uncover that as a major risk? Well, so because one of the things that causes the um, senescence of the T cells is the shortening of telomeres, we, uh, you can try to do everything you, that you can put all the technology that you have available to help lengthen telomeres or to keep them from getting shorter, uh, those things are lifestyle things, keeping stress down, eating a, a, a sort of a Mediterranean diet or lots of fruits and vegetables, antioxidants can help to maintain the telomere length in those cells, good levels of vitamin D, and then there are products that help to turn on telomerase and help the cells to be longer. We just published uh, some data, or we haven't actually published, we just released the data uh, showing that uh, a astragalus root molecule extract can lower the number of senescent T cells quite significantly in an individual that has a high collection of those. And presumably, if they're in that immune risk, phenotype could bring them out of it and help make it less likely for them to succumb to a common infection. Oh, it's fantastic. I think just being able to detect and predict what health trajectory someone's on and turn it around, which I saw in some of your data, is quite exciting in today's world. And hopefully will help turn our six centric kind of society and healthcare system into a real health-centric system where we can keep people healthy instead and vital right, instead that's of key. aging. Mm -hmm. right. Exactly. Well, it's been fun talking to you. You too. Thank you for participating at the AMG conference in Tucson, Arizona, 2017.